Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson and I'm the director of Stevenson Dental Solutions and I want to thank all of you that have been watching the uh, videos. We've now hit over 8,000 subscribers so hang in there guys, more content coming every week. Today we're going to talk about the Acadental type of knot, specifically tooth number 30 where we're going to perform the full gold crown preparation. So let's take a look at the tooth and make some decisions about where we want to put things. And we're going to take a look at it from the side in occlusion. And I like to make a few marks on the side of the tooth to orient me on where I want to have the low points and where I want to have the high points of my reduction as viewed from the facial. When you look at the tooth from the side like this, you see that you want to have these peaks and valleys, if you will, correspond with the morphology of the opposing dentition. Let's take a look at this from the occlusal and pay attention to the morphology on this particular tooth. There are some differences between the lingual cusps and the facial cusps. The facial cusps have somewhat more of a flatter triangular ridge where the lingual cusps have more of a pronounced triangular ridge. And we're going to want to follow that morphological variation when we prepare the tooth. I like to start with a 57 carbide burr. It's one millimeter in diameter and I like to utilize the plane reduction technique. This is the C plane all across that lingual from the mesial to the distal and reduce these little segments one millimeter or a little bit more in depth initially and consider each one of these as a separate little project. So there's a one project here and then I'll move on to the next project which would be right here. So each one of these becomes its own little uh, mission. I'm going to get this one area with the burr in the proper orientation reduced one millimeter then I'm going to move on to the next area and so on and I find that when I do it that way I end up having a little bit more uh, control of the reduction and I'm not thinking about other things I'm just focusing on this one area at a time and not getting my mind too busy with information about other areas that I'm not really preparing and in doing this, you can make the preparation a little bit smoother and perhaps follow the inclination of these cusps a little bit better. Yeah, so let's move on to the functional cusp bevel. It's also called the A-plane. And perform the same activity here, basically just reducing the cusps in such a way that you create the height where that little arrow is and the depth where you have the line that's facing down gingivally and kind of paying attention to those while you're holding the handpiece at the appropriate angle which is going to be usually close to parallel to the inclination of the lingual cusps. Some people like using a diamond for this reduction. I think that that's great as long as you pay attention to how much you're reducing and utilize that diamond as a depth gauge, I think that that can be very effective. Other people ask about the distal cusp. We need to worry about that. And I'm like, well, yeah, sure. You just, just reduce it like any other cusp, and it ends up however it ends up. Oftentimes, that distal cusp is almost removed when you go interproximal, though. And now we're doing the final plane, which would be the B plane, and reducing that also one millimeter. And just using the burr as a guide. So when the burr runs up against uh, the adjacent area, you can measure how much the burr is cutting away and get a really good idea of how much reduction you're gaining without the use of depth cuts, but these depth planes. Now we know we're going to be under reduced at this point because we have only reduced approximately a millimeter, maybe a little bit more. And so you can see that the occlusal clearance is certainly under the 1.5 requirement. Some areas are okay, other areas are a little bit uh, underreduced. So what we're going to do at this point is hold the burr a little bit on its side. And this is just a little trick to move the valley between the cusp tips, the mesial buckle and distal buckle, into the right location. And then when you close the type it on down here at this point, you can see that you're getting a better alignment of the morphological features from the maxillary to the mandibular teeth. You can see that that distal buccal cusp 
uh, distal cusp rather is a little bit uh, too steep so we're going to just flatten that a little bit from this perspective and then we're going to move on to the reduction from the view from the occlusal as we've been doing previously. You can see we're just smoothing the occlusal here. I'm using a slow speed. You could use a high speed and just stalling it out or perhaps you'd like to use an electric amp piece turned down to maybe 5,000 maybe as much as 10,000 RPM. Probably the most challenging thing is to avoid hitting the opposite incline while you're smoothing one incline. And I think it just takes a little bit of focus and practice. And break it down into little, little pieces. Don't try to do everything at once. Just think about, right now I'm just going to do that one little area there on that incline, and that one little area in that incline, and so on. And I think you'll find it works a little bit better. A student asked me the other day, how many preps do you have to do to get really good? And I said, I don't know, 5,000? <laughs> it's a lot of preps, right? Uh, don't expect to get uh, to the level of mastery on anything until you've done probably about 10,000 hours of work. See, now you can see that we have about uh, 1.5 millimeters of clearance on that, at least that distal portion. The mesial portion is still a little bit under-reduced. That's 1.5. There's probably uh, somewhere in the 1.2 to 1.4 range. The RGS-3 fits easily, so we, we know we're well beyond one millimeter of clearance, but we're not quite enough. So let's keep going uh, with the reduction, and then we can move on to the axial. For the axial reduction, I like to work on the facial and then on the lingual with this 878K012 diamond. One thing you want to pay attention to when you look at this tooth from the side view is that although the tooth leans lingually, it's got a pretty large bulbous area there in the gingival one-third and you're going to want to keep your hand piece uh, somewhat tipped to follow that inclination of the tooth itself and that would mean looking at the adjacent teeth and orienting the burr in such a way that you reduce parallel to those surfaces. On the lingual the height of contour is in the middle third so obviously uh, that's going to be the area where the burr hits first. The line of draw on this tooth uh, as we mentioned, is not this way, but is tipped over a little bit like this. And we can go ahead and start the reduction on the facial with this diamond and keep the uh, finish line initially about a millimeter above the tissue level, and then we can always lower that down. And you notice how the burr is engaging the gingival third first. It's not engaging the middle third or the occlusal third. It's down at the gingival third because that's where the height of contour is located. So I like to hold the handpiece with a finger rest and keep the burr parallel to the line of draw while I'm performing this reduction. And I'm not going to be placing the secondary plane yet. I'm going to be working on getting the finish line relatively smooth, the location, initial location anyway, about a millimeter above the tissue, and then uh, moving the burr in approximately as far as I can so that I can start that interproximal reduction easier in the, in the step that's coming up next. Now we're ready for that secondary plane. And it's really critical that you make this secondary plane and follow that buccal groove of the second molar and move the burr over and start reducing there. And try not to blend the primary plane and secondary planes together. You'll end up having an over taper in that particular case. And don't take away too much of the functional cusp bevel. Leave it intact. We now want to line the burr up on the facial and with a finger rest, move the burr over to the lingual. There's my finger rest. And then we can prepare the lingual so that the gingival third of the facial and the lingual are parallel to each other or tapering towards each other, what, six degrees or so. And after getting it to the point where you've reduced the lingual side and move the burr as much in approximal as you can, you want to go ahead and take a look at how the cusps are all lining up and make sure everything's in the right position. You have the right angles everywhere. It's a good time to maybe make some adjustments. Uh, make sure that the buccal cusp tips are lining up in line of the arch with the premolar and the molar behind it. That's a really good check to do. So interproximal reduction is really quite simple at this point because you're just reducing a very small little area 
with the 859010, which is a needle-shaped diamond. It's a little hard to use because it's quite long, and if your patients can't open very wide, it's a hard burr to use, and you can always uh, cut off the end of the burr, uh, the, the shank side, and uh, get it to the point where you can make it a little bit shorter. Or you can use other burrs for this purpose, uh, like a 168L uh, carbide works really well for this purpose as well. And we're just leaving a little thin little shell against that premolar so we can prote protect that premolar. And then just move the burr right through there. And you can see how you don't over taper when you use this burr. And we don't have to move through a lot of tooth structure because we've removed it already in the previous step on the facial and lingual side. So we're just going to work our way through here. And you're really not worried about the chamfer at this point or any particular finish line quality. You're just trying to just knock through that interproximal tooth structure, remove it so that you can gain access to it with the larger burr. And this is one of the times when I'm actually going to go back to a previous burr. I'm going to utilize the 878K012. And this burr is going to be used to even out the axial. In other words, axial refinement. So now we're using the burr again, but now we're using it a little bit more carefully, uh, really holding it very, very still and focusing on only the areas that really need, an, need some help to create an even taper, 360 degrees around the tooth. I'm not even that concerned about the finish line. I'm really trying to get the axial walls uniform in their taper. And this is gonna be done all the way around the tooth. Once we have uh, convinced ourselves that the tooth has adequate draw, adequate taper, by removing any little areas where we have maybe a tightness of the draw or even an undercut, we can then move on to the very next step, which would be the refinement of everything. Now, some people like to leave things a little bit rougher like this because they believe it has additional retention, but I think it's nicer to smooth things, personally. So here we're just using uh, the burr once again just to show you how we would kind of keep it continuously moving and with a good finger rest and a little bit of practice you can make this happen. So now you can see that the reduction is, is much better and you can see the hint of a secondary plane there and the functional cusp bevel as being three distinct areas. So why don't we go ahead and use the 8877 for the chamfer refinement and any other refinement we need to do. This is a red stripe burr and so this burr does have uh, 30 micron grit diamond particles and we can round off these little sharp edges that we need to do. And the final preparation for the full gold crown has been uh, made at this point and I think that it should satisfy the needs from a standpoint of retention and resistance form and from a standpoint of having adequate uh, smoothness and definition of the finish line. There's always some things you can smooth and take a little bit more time with. This is a 0.4 millimeter RGS one which shows you that the finish line is just slightly super gingival. I was holding myself to the 0.5 millimeter above the tissue standard and you can see if you were to hold it here you're you're pretty close to that requirement and we've maintained the morphology of the occlusal as well. One of the things about the uh, Acadental Typenon teeth, they cut a little bit differently than the Kilgore and the Columbia teeth and the Frasaco teeth, so you want to practice on it before you go in and take an exam with this Typenon. Um, but I think the result was reasonable today. I certainly enjoyed uh, prepping it and hope you enjoyed watching it. So stay tuned and give me feedback. I uh, really like hearing from you all. Take care.